Many Arab citizens have lost confidence in the League of Arab States and describe it as an idle organization. Critics think that the Arab League does not reflect the views or the will of the Arab peoples, but those of the despotic Arab rulers. They argue that it has become a place for meetings and issuing many decisions without application. They claim that this important regional organization only offers empty words and cannot afford to manage even its internal administrative affairs, let alone resolving the major Arab problems. Former Arab League chief Amr Musa himself has been repeatedly accused of supporting dictatorial regimes. But others believe that the Arab League made a quantum leap during Amr Musa's tenure and that he was able to raise its profile. As you have seen, the welcome, uh, the happiness, uh, the uh, generosity, the music, all this is an indication of the positive work the Arab League has uh, achieved and also the degree of welcome, of understanding, of appreciation by the people in Darfur, in West Darfur, for the projects of the Arab League. They have now, they are sure that what we have said was not just words, but deeds. Villages have been inaugurated. You have seen the villages yourself. You have seen the school. You have seen the hospital. You have seen everything. So this is something good. Peace and Focus spoke to Amr Musa, who is currently one of Egypt's presidential candidates. I asked him about his main achievements while in office as Secretary General of the League of Arab States and whether he's satisfied. I am to an extent satisfied with what I have done, to an extent. I, can, I, I cannot say that I have achieved everything I wanted to achieve. But as you see, the Arab League is uh, participating in so many international, in the international life on the uh, young people, women uh, progress, uh, the family planning, the economic development, the uh, clash of civilizations, the political side, all those, we are there. And the Arab League is being listened to. And they want to listen to our point of view on all those uh, issues. Second one is opening the door for the civil society to get into the Arab League. Any moment you visit the Arab League, you will find so many organizations either attending meetings or uh, sitting around uh, to have documents, etc. The civil society. So it is, this is the new thing. And you can find them sitting in the Economic and Social Council meetings, in the Human Rights meeting, Commission meetings, social development meetings, and so on. Thirdly, the, the spirit itself. Up until the year 2000, all Arab League resolutions were secret. Starting 2001, all Arab League resolutions became public. It, there was a business working how to leak the resolutions, the uh, debates, etc. When they became open, anybody can attend except in special cases where we want to have closed meetings or uh, 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 confidential uh, documents. So this also opening up the, the Arab League. Added to that, the documentation, the reports about the state of the Arab world, social, economic, political, the developments. Every six months there is a report uh, distributed to the uh, members of the Arab League about the situation in the Arab world world uh, in all aspects, as I just expressed to you. What else? There are so many other uh, uh, issues, but still we have a long way to go. Now, for example, the budget of the Arab League doubled, but being 90% paid, which is good. So the Arab League has become a stable, uh, rich organization that can really uh, uh, contribute to the Arab life, the neighboring life, and the international life. Musa believes in promoting dialogue and understanding, as well as strengthening partnerships and concrete projects between the Arab world and Europe. The international conference titled Europe and the Arab World, Connecting Partners in Dialogue, 
which was held in Vienna in 2008, was his brainchild. In November 2010, he took part in opening the first Arab-European Young Leaders Forum in Vienna. Both of them are part of a uh, new policy followed by the Arab League in cooperation with several countries. In this case, Austria, uh, to promote uh, a cooperation in the economic and social field with the participation of the NGO, the non-governmental organizations, the organizations of the civil society in the Arab world, together with their counterparts in Europe. This is part of a policy uh, we have decided to uh, follow and to initiate, in fact, uh, to further cooperation on the grassroot level, not only government to government or official to official, but with the civil society uh, taking the lead in our activities. The title is Euro-Arab Cooperation, all the Arab uh, countries, and it goes beyond the Mediterranean activities. It is not under the uh, Union for the Mediterranean, but under a wider uh, title, which is the Euro-Arab Cooperation. Uh, this meeting uh, uh, has to deal with the young leaders. So the educated young people from uh, the Arab countries, coming from the uh, Morocco, from Bahrain, from the Gulf in general, and from North Africa, from Egypt, from Sudan, uh, Syria, Iraq. It, in fact, it is it, it, the, the, the presence of the Arab youth coming from the 22 Arab countries is being felt. Uh, and this, in, in our opinion, will uh, uh, further enhance the exposing our youth, our young people, uh, to the international, the, 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 the wider international uh, conferences, uh, listening to or attending debates on the clash of civilizations, the relations between civilizations, the uh, new items like uh, the climate change, the uh, environment, human rights, and so on. Musa sees this initiative addressing a gap in the Union for the Mediterranean project, a multilateral partnership launched in Paris in July 2008. Now, Union for the Mediterranean is not really working for the time being. It's not working for several reasons. But this one is working because we planned it from the, from the beginning that it is for the civil society in both, uh, on both sides, not for governments and not a political uh, forum, uh, but a general one, as you have seen this morning. The speeches, the interventions, the debates, all concentrated on the people-to-people -people level. Amr Musa believes in the power of young people to change and create a better world. The first Arab-European Young Leaders Forum was held at the Diplomatic Academy of Vienna. It brought together over 55 young men and women of excellence and experience from politics, business, academia and the media. Peace and focus was there. Uh, dialogue, of course, is very important between uh, religions, civilizations, cultures. Uh, but what is, uh, in this context, maybe even more important is to educate our young people. They are our future. Uh, and uh, since this academy is all about education, I think it's very appropriate and I'm very proud that this conference takes place here at the Vienna Diplomatic Academy. I think the forum is useful because it helps in networking and connecting European and Arab young leaders as well as sharing expertise. It promotes cultural exchange and cooperation. I've visited many places and met people who think differently. This will help me introduce new ideas and perspectives while conducting my radio coverage. This is a beginning for us because um, Romania is a new member for, of European Union uh, and uh, I think I'm the only participant from the Eastern Europe from, uh, for this uh, forum. It is import for, important for me because uh, the Arab countries sh uh, should not only look when they are talking to Europe only on the west part and, uh, of, the, um, of the Europe in the old countries of Europe. I think uh, uh, countries like Rom Romania, Poland, Hungary, Bulgaria should be also um, in the attention of 
of Arab countries. And we should uh, uh, restart the dialogue that was starting long ago, like in the 60s and 70s, and uh, that in the past 20 years uh, it was little forgotten. I'm very specifically looking for new partners. We have a lot of projects and initiatives we now have carried through in Denmark, and we have seen the result of, and we are very eager and curious to actually try to implement these initiatives elsewhere. I feel so powerful and empowered being here on the personal level, uh, getting uh, much more energy to go back and to, uh, to make something real for the community and for the real people who are in need. And on the professional level, I believe uh, networking in this conference is very essential, but uh, not only networking, also partnerships and building uh, mutual projects. Uh, the idea is that uh, an empathetic civilization is that what we need now, uh, not only cultural dialogue, uh, but also uh, thinking that we are all human beings living in the same globe and we need to respect and accept each other as we are. This joint initiative of the Arab League and the Austrian Foreign Ministry is the first of its kind to focus on young leaders with the objective of enhancing responsible leadership skills and exploring innovative forms of cross-cultural cooperation. We were looking for young professionals, um, for people that have shown some engagement, that have set up projects. Some of the projects are very successful already, some of the projects are in the making. And uh, so the criteria was maybe not so strict, but it was important for us to see that these people are working for change and social cohesion. Um, so in our eyes, so, uh, young leaders are people that claim their rights as citizens. And I think it was also mentioned by the minister, it was also mentioned, uh, it was also mentioned by uh, Austrian minister, uh, Foreign Minister Spindelecker, it was mentioned by Secretary General Amber Musa, that uh, reform needs participation. And I think the people we selected are good examples that strive for, for activities against all odds. Many of them have great difficulties. The forum organizers were focused on selecting European keynote speakers and participants with migrant backgrounds, who are successful models and catalysts for development. Of course, we also have uh, members of this kind of, let's say, community, um, European citizens with a so-called migrant background, uh, be it from Turkey or the Arab world. I think this is important, as we have also seen someone on the panel, but also in, in the, uh, w uh, among the participants, we see people that take leadership and um, they can be seen as some sort of models um, in the context of dialogue. Uh, it is a pity that not the majority um, of uh, immigrant communities uh, do have this social upward mobility, they are, do not acquire this uh, level, I should say, but I think we need to support those who, who probably make it or who have, have already made it and uh, to use them and make them also make also these people aware to see themselves as multipliers and as catalysts for such kind of development. The head of the task force Dialogue of Cultures in Vienna added that it was difficult to find young leaders from the Arab world to participate in the 2010 forum. There's, of course, a different understanding. The most difficult aspect or the most difficult criteria to meet uh, was the criteria of age, because we said they should not be older than four, or they should, yeah, they should not be older than 40 years. Um, and this was not so easy, because um, many, um, in, in, especially in the Arab world, I suppose, and also in the um, in, in Asia, Asian countries, you are not a leader. You're not recognized as a leader if you are at the age of 30 or 35. Um, but still, I think we found uh, professionals, we found active people that really fulfill the criteria of young leaders, young professionals, uh, and that might be future, even future leaders. The revolutions sweeping the Arab world today have proved that there are many young Arab leaders around and the selection process for the next forum will be easier. The second Arab-European Young Leaders Forum is expected to be held in Egypt in 2011. I think um, the main reason why to bring young people from the Arab world and European countries together is just to get this personal contact. I think this is uh, most useful because then you get more in touch with another world, with uh, another space, where you have to move 
And uh, I think this was the main reason why we organized that in Vienna for the first time. We would like to continue now in Cairo. I think late November would be a time where it could happen here. I had today a meeting with Amrin Musa, the Secretary General of the Arab League, and uh, we agreed that we should organize that uh, in late November here in Cairo. Arab-European relations are deeply rooted in history. Amrin Musa thinks that such relation deserves to be granted an agreed upon and solid strategic dimension. We discussed on the formal level the Euro-Arab relations and that we needed and we continue to tell the Europeans that we have to establish a, uh, a, a, an official framework for consultations among governments on the ministerial level and possibly on summit level and have all the Arab countries, the 22 Arab countries, and the 27 uh, members of the EU agreeing on a plan of action. This plan of action will have by necessity to involve the civil society, the private sector, the young people, women, and, and so on. And this is the thing that uh, we uh, hold uh, uh, very uh, dear to our uh, thinking, and, and, and as, as, as you see, it is working. Musa thinks that concrete steps are needed to deal with anti-Islam rightist planks in European countries and to support better integration of Muslims. We have a problem in Europe, uh, a problem pertaining to the relations between the West and Islam. It has also to do with the item called terrorism and a lot of confusion has been built around this item with fingers pointed to the Muslims in general, uh, which really misrepresented the whole case, the whole situation. And we intend to correct this uh, impression. Musa thinks that the Camp David peace agreement Egypt signed with Israel in 1979 is a failure and should be scrapped. The situation today is really bad. It's not working the, uh, because of the Israeli policy in the occupied territories. To build settlements means to change the demographic composition of the territories by evicting the Palestinians and bringing in, bringing in people coming from all over the, uh, the world just because of their religion. Uh, and have a, a, a confusing and confused notion that God has to do or had to do with this piece of land, which of course that's um, uh, is not shared by anybody anyway. Uh, this is an occupied territory that belongs to the Palestinians and being settled in a way that would prevent the establishment of a, a viable Palestinian state. So you cannot negotiate while the commodity you are negotiating about is being changed. That whatever you uh, want to buy or want to sell is not exactly the commodity you want uh, or you are entitled to buy. The, uh, the, 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 the way Israel is uh, dealing with the issue of peace shows that the Israeli policy do not really care, does not really cater to peace or care about peace. They want the situation to continue as it is. The territories are under their occupation, the Palestinian people under their rule, and uh, no state of Palestine, but make the state like a carrot running and you are running, running after it for uh, decades and the decades until you are tired. So they don't want peace to, to, uh, to prevail. There is something wrong here. The big powers and the brokers have to make sure that Israel is ready to enter into peace. If they, and they know for sure that they are procrastinating and changing the subject and doing everything to stop the development towards, or a movement, steady movement towards peace. They know that. They cannot continue telling the Israelis, what about one small step? We don't need small steps. 
We need to deal with the issue once and for all. They created those, those international players, created the notion of manage the crisis. Keep everybody busy with managing the crisis. Don't care about, uh, never mind about its uh, solution. Just manage. Keep them busy with conferences. Keep them busy with tables, round tables, uh, long tables, uh, initiatives, white papers, uh, all those things. We know, now we know that. All the tricks of international diplomacy have been played on us. So we cannot buy any more peace process, international conference, round table, uh, guarantees, all those things end up by being just a mirage, trying to keep the Arabs busy and allow Israel to settle the territories, to colonize the territories. However, we have confidence in President Obama and his team. So now is the time either to move <coughs> forward or to let us get back to the United Nations and put the whole thing, the whole file, before the international community as represented in the Security Council. Never mind the veto, because we are not moving anyway. We are losing anyway. So if we are losing anyway, why don't we go directly to the body, the United Nations body, that is responsible for international peace and security and put the case. If they want to veto it, let them veto it. But the international community has to know that we cannot continue to be fooled with the tricks of international diplomacy just to procrastinate, manage the crisis, manage the crisis, manage the crisis, never mind solving it. The Arab initiative is a statement of position. This is the position of the Arab countries pertaining to how to solve the problem. We are ready to shoulder our commitment, provided that Israel would be ready to do the same. If they do the same, and their, their commitment is to withdraw from the occupied territories and accept a Palestinian state with East Jerusalem as its capital and to negotiate properly. Our commitment is to recognize Israel, to normalize our relations with it, and to consider the Arab-Israeli uh, conflict as ended. We turn the page. Israel wants normalization but it wants it free of charge and want it, as they say, up front. Well, this is impossible to happen. Nobody can do, should do that or would do that. Absolutely. So the Arab initiative is there expressing our point of view. To solve the problem, you have to carry out your commitments. You have to withdraw. You have to solve the, the, the to, to, you have to help in solving the uh, refugee problem. You have to accept that East Jerusalem would be the capital of uh, Palestine, that Jerusalem could be the capital of two states, and the withdrawal should be final, and not only from the Palestinian territories, but Syrian and Lebanon, Lebanon, in order to have a comprehensive peace. But the fact is that Israel never expressed any positive opinion about the Arab initiative. Why? Because they want one aspect of it. And the former foreign minister, former foreign minister of Israel, said it: that we, what about normalization? To show that you are a, a, a ready for peace. Of course, oh, this this is uh, a phony argument. If they are ready for peace, they should start withdrawing. They should stop building settlements. They should stop the the changes in the occupied territories and the eviction of people and the destruction of villages, etc. Then, then we will be ready to take a step or a parallel step of that. But for us to uh, take one step, one concession after the other, without the other side doing anything, they have to forget it. It will not happen anymore. Many revolutionaries in the Arab region wish the Arab League would play a constructive role in building democracy in Egypt, Tunisia, Libya, as well as Yemen and the rest of the 22 Arab countries. They think its role should not be limited to the Middle East peace process, but should also focus on effective mechanisms to really assist Arab countries in growing their economies. All of us, all of us are in uh, a state of frustration, uh, young and old. Uh, but there must be some hope. 
the Arab world is here today and tomorrow and after tomorrow. They cannot be evicted from the Arab land. So don't worry about the future of the, uh, as in so far as existence is concerned. But you have to worry about the generations, their education, and that we need uh, an educated uh, class uh, that come out of our schools ready to join in and participate and contribute to the de development according to the uh, new life in the new century. So we have to link up with the world. And this has to be done. Once it is done, I assure you, the future will be much brighter. Link it to that, or one should not uh, minimize the, the, the dangers inherent in the existing uh, political and security problems in Palestine and, uh, and several other areas in the Arab world. But talking about the future, I believe that all those problems would one day be resolved. But the human being, if it is not ready, if we don't make it ready to, to deal with the, with the new ambience of the 21st century, then we'll be losing the future. The task of the new Arab League Secretary General, Nabil Al Arabi, who has pledged to promote united Arab action and achieve the aspirations of the Arab peoples, will not be easy. He has assumed the post at an unenviable time when a large number of countries are transitioning from autocratic to democratic rule. It's hoped that the role of the Arab League will change with the Arab peoples in Tunisia, Egypt, Libya, Syria, Yemen and Bahrain out on the streets to demand democracy. أصبحت وزيرا للخارجية فأمينا عاما لجماعة الدول العربية فأصبح نبيل العربي أيضا وزيرا للخارجية وأمينا عاما لجماعة الدول العربية. I was Egypt's foreign minister, then secretary general of the League of Arab States. Dr. Nabil Al Arabi was also Egypt's foreign minister and will become the Arab League secretary general. This is an interesting coincidence, but it also has deep meaning. It is because all Arab League colleagues will feel the commonalities between us while managing and leading the pan-Arab organization. Egypt's representative is no different from Qatar's representative and vice versa because we are all brothers. I congratulate Dr. Nabil Al Arabi and wish him success. Dr. Al Arabi is the right person for the job, and that's why we in Qatar supported this nomination. This is the most difficult task I will assume. The Arab League is not just about summits, the council, and the secretary general. In my opinion, the Arab League is the fruit of cooperation of all its competent employees. I pledge to follow in Mr. Amr Musa's footsteps and I will spare no effort in performing the job as required.